Hello there everybody, Sam Strings here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review of a Backman tender engine. Now today's engine is one that I've had for a really long time and I think it has appeared in perhaps one or two running sessions but for whatever reason I've never gotten around to reviewing it. And the loco in question is this, it is the Backman, now I keep wanting to say that this is the standard class 4 though of course it is the IVAT class 4 and if I get that wrong at all today do excuse me it is a slip of the tongue, I know it's the IVAT version. Uh, as you can tell by the packaging this is a slightly older version of the model except Backman are still producing this as far as I know. Uh, how updated the latest latest version is compared with this I don't know I believe it's the same model but as I say I'm not 100% I'm not sure of the differences uh, but given the age of this box or given uh, the perceived age of this box I suppose it isn't really that much of a dated model you can tell the box says here it's DCC ready which is quite a modern touch and there are quite a few other modern touches with this model as well so yes quite a business like locomotive some people find them ugly some people don't uh, so do let me know what you reckon in fact let's have a poll shall we are these things ugly or are they not or if you're not sure yet let me show you first and we'll decide together right let's get this out and we'll see what she's like now, at the moment, Backman sell the current version of this model for £135, I believe it is, which to me sounds a little bit steep, but then, of course, I don't really know the extent to which this has been updated. However, you can buy this from the retailers quite a bit cheaper. I think Hattons have these for £114, something like that. There's a link in the description anyway if you're interested in picking one of them up. They are very, very good quality. I'm going to say that straight away. Even for a Backman model, very, very good quality. Let me show you the end of the box then. So the product number of my particular one is 32-577. It's an IVAC class 4, the running number there which is 43160. This one is in the BR lined black with the early emblem. Now obviously natively these locos were from the LMS, although they were introduced right before nationalisation so their time under the LMS would have been very very short lived. And because of that, I don't really know whether Backman have done an LMS version. I certainly can't remember seeing one, but uh, if they have and you know that they have, let me know in the uh, comments, because I wouldn't mind trying to find one. Uh, but yes, well, I won't say unfortunately, but uh, perhaps not quite as attractively as it might have been in an LMS livery. This one is in the black, uh, the BR black. Okay, so no info or anything like that on the back of the box. Uh, we'll have to see what we get inside. Uh, so let's get this open and take a look. And no, this is not... Uh, well, I don't know if Mainline did a version, actually. I think Mainline did the standard four, didn't they? Uh, but uh, no, this is uh, a newer tooling, definitely. Okay, so on the top we've got this card that says IVAC Class 4, 260 locomotive and whatnot. And then on the back here, yes, there is a brief history of the class. And if I try and get a decent shot of that, hopefully you'll be able to read it if you want to, if you want to pause it. And inside here, yes, there is a little bit of paperwork. Uh, let's just have a look at the exploded diagram, shall we? Oh, wow. So this one goes into quite some detail. Uh, yes, there's the exploded diagram. You can see the chassis there, which does have circular bearings. It doesn't have any sort of proper separately fitted bearings, but at least they're circular and not square. So that's reasonably good. That's halfway good. And you can see there, there's also a DCC socket as the box promised. So there you go. That's your diagram of all the loco parts. And then at the bottom there, you've got uh, all the useful information and things that you usually get. Uh, the other stuff is just about the collector's club and the guarantee. So we'll put that to one side. And let's take a look at the loco, shall we? And there it is. Uh, obviously, it reminds me of the Class 2 a little bit, which, of course, I that also desi designed. Uh, but I think this is just slightly larger. So let's see what else you get in the box besides the loco. You always get these things. Uh, I seem to remember that they sort of fit over the smoke box and protect it slightly, but I can never get them back on after initially opening the boxes. Uh, but yeah, that's a bit of tat anyway. And then the detail pack is relatively sparse. Let's see if I can get it. Yep, yeah, I've got it. Uh, yeah, very, very sparse. Just a couple of ladders there that you presumably you'd fit to the loco. I can't remember whether the instructions showed you where they would go, uh, but uh, yeah, possibly they did. I may have already had this open to get the couplings out. I'm not too sure. And I think the brake rigging and things have already been fitted. Right, let's get this out then. Let's start with the tender, as I often do. 
Okay, so noticeably it's a very, very light tender. It seems to be all made of plastic. There doesn't seem to be any die cast on this, but that is relatively standard, I would say, for a tender. Apart from that, though, the decoration looks pretty good, I think, doesn't it? And uh, we'll take a look at it more closely later on, but also the, the level of detail looks uh, definitely more than adequate. So yeah, quite a nice tender. More on that later. Let's grab the Loco then, and we'll see what this one's like. There's a noticeable difference straight away in the weight, and I think you'd hope so, wouldn't you, really? But yeah, it's a very, very heavy thing and actually feeling these uh, this running board here it's clearly made of die cast it's cold against the fingers and it weighs an awful lot so there you have it, the uh, IVAC Class 4. Let me put the tender with it. Uh, yes, some people do find these things ugly, as I say. Uh, and you can kind of see why, because, yeah, there are large gaps between the uh, the sort of boiler and the lower chassis there. And, uh, yeah, it's just a, a slightly oddly proportioned loco, isn't it? But uh, still, I think... Reasonably elegant in its own special way. Uh, let's say that, shall we? <laughs> so there we go. There's a little look at the Loco. But for now, let's take some history on these things. I'll tell you a little bit about their background. And then after that, we'll get her up onto the white background and I will show you her up close. Okay, let's do it. So, the LMS Class 4 was designed by Henry Ivatt and introduced in 1947 for medium freight work on the railway. Although they first emerged pre-nationalisation, they spent the bulk of their lifetimes under British railways, hauling both passenger and goods trains post-1948. Although the Class 4s were excellent performers, most enthusiasts find them a little bit revolting in terms of their appearance. Uh, they had the high running plates, as I've already mentioned, and the large gaps in the framework, uh, sort of set it apart from the more handsome engines, uh, the ones from Stania's era, for example. Definitely a very different kettle of fish, these. But despite their looks, 162 were produced in total, and although most were scrapped during the end of the steam era, I believe one has been preserved, and that's always good news. Uh, you know, it's a shame there weren't more, but one is better than none. So there she is then up against the white background for you and yeah, even though this isn't the most modern tooling in the world and even though some people find the things to be very, very ugly, I have to admit that in terms of appearance, the Loco seems to capture the real prototype really, really nicely. Clearly, I'm not an expert on the prototype. I couldn't tell you where all the rivets should be. I can't tell you whether they're all in the right places and things, although there are people that can. I can say that it, it really certainly captures the character of the prototype and the overall appearance. So for that, I think it's pretty good. Also, the quality, as I've already alluded to, is very high on this model. There's a lot of die cast work. It seems to be well built. In fact, the only real criticism, if I had to give one, would be over on the other side, the pipe work is a little bit flexible. You can put your fingers on it and it flexes under them, uh, which to me, in the hands, is not a very pleasant experience. When you're, when you're handling such an expensive model that costs 100 plus pounds, <laughs> to have it flex under the fingers is not a very pleasant experience. And to be honest, those pipes don't really need to be separately fitted. They could easily be a part of the body. And on top of that, disassembly is a bit of a nightmare with this one as well because of those fragile pipes. To get the body off to start with due to the sort of proportions of this model is difficult. But with that extra pipe work, it really isn't a very pleasant experience. And I didn't enjoy servicing this one very much. But apart from that, you know, once it's all together and once it's working, it is a relatively solid model as you can tell. So let's take a look at some of the details then. We'll start with paintwork because this is lined. As you can see, the lining here on the boiler is done to a high standard. As I say, it's not the most modern loco in the world, but it is done very, very well. Extremely crisp, the lining there. The steam chest also has the lining on, which is similarly well done. And also on the sides of the cab, you've got the number four there, which stands for the class classification. And then the running number 43160, all very nicely applied. The smoke box has a small amount of paintwork to it as well. You've got the running number there and the shed code as well as a smoke box dart and a handrail both of which are separately fitted and on the side of separately fitted parts there is quite a lot to look at most noticeably the whistle on top there is a small die cast piece which is separately fitted and made of metal and also the safety valves are made of metal too which makes them look a lot more realistic you've also got the reversing rod here which appears to be separately fitted it's not really very clear whether or not it is made of metal or plastic uh, but uh, regardless it does look relatively effective and to be honest all over the side you've got a whole host of different separately fitted parts the standard handrail of course you've got a whole load of pipe work here just on the side of the smoke box again i'm no expert on the prototype so i can't tell you what all of that is but i can tell you that it looks effective and also because the running board is so high between the running board and the wheels you get a good look at some of the details as well i've mentioned on the other side there's quite a lot of pipe work but even on this side there's a lot of detail on the body slash chassis and once again a few uh, finer details uh, is a little bit more difficult to put your fingers on those bits so it doesn't matter that they're perhaps a little bit more fragile. 
Also, the running gear on this model is quite nicely done. As you can see, there's quite a high rod count, uh, quite a lot going on there. And as I say, it all looks very impressive when it runs. And also, another impressive feature, albeit possibly a little bit ugly, is the fact that you can see right through to the other side. There are large gaps, and the mechanism doesn't hinder that in any way. So, yeah, if I wave around the back, you can see my fingers there right through the other side so yeah it's not an attractive feature but it is a realistic one which I think is pretty good. Now the front buffer beam is pretty convincing I believe the vacuum pipe did originally come in the detail pack and this model is second hand but in great condition so I think the previous owner did fit the vacuum pipe there but as you can see you've got separately fitted lamp irons and yes this model does have sprung buffers there you go yep they're springing quite nicely and it's also worth mentioning that as most modern locos do this one is kitted out with NEM pockets and NEM couplings which have already been fitted, which is uh, great to see. I do like that. Now, the cab is relatively nicely detailed. You can see you've got these pretty realistic windows, these are uh, the glazing here, which does fit flush with the outside of the cab, uh, which is always a nice realistic touch. But sadly, this version does have no cab detail that is painted, and that is a little bit of a shame, once again, for the high price of the model. But, once again, as I say, Backman are still producing this model, and it's very possible that the latest releases have had a painted cab. Uh, if anybody knows, once again, be sure to let me know in the comments, but uh, my version doesn't. And uh, it's not a huge criticism, because the cab is relatively shielded there. You don't get a great view of the cab just looking at it. But still, knowing that it's got a painted cab often increases the satisfaction, at least for me anyway. Uh, you know, knowing that there's a realistic cab inside there, I think, uh, brings joy to a lot of people. It's always impressive to see. Uh, but yeah, not a huge criticism because elsewhere the model is very very good. Let's take a look at the tender then. This is the classic IVAT looking tender. I've got a few class 2s that have a similar looking tender to this uh, but none of them are as good as this. Uh, the old sort of Hornby Triang-esque ones that I've got uh, do sort of pale in comparison to this. Uh, so let's take a look. The lining as you'd expect is very nicely done and you've got the early crest there as the packaging promised us. The tender also has quite a lot of realistic riveting. On the body here it's good, it's good enough, but on the underframe it almost looks like it's die cast, doesn't it? Just look at that, it, it almost looks metallic. It isn't, it is made of plastic and you can tell just by how light it is and by obviously just feeling it, but it looks very effective and there aren't many tenders that actually look that effective, so Backman have done a very good job with that. Uh, yeah, I think it's just those rivets, the way they're moulded, looks highly realistic. I don't even know what it is about them that looks so good, but there, there is something. And around the back you've got the separately fitted ladder which once again is quite a nicely detailed piece I like the look of that uh, once again more handrails you've got more sprung buffers a uh, vacuum pipe which I believe is separately fitted this time uh, factory fitted I should say uh, not just part of the detail pack and then the coal load isn't too bad at all it's not actually glossy like a lot of the backman coal is so I think that should be applauded uh, whether it's removable or not I'm not sure I I, I haven't tried to <laughs> but uh, it might well be as I say, modern versions may even have the decoder socket inside the tender, so it might have been altered since my version was made. But either way, the coal isn't all that bad, to be honest with you. And once again, we do have some glazing on the tender as well, so that the crews of the Loco can look back along the train, which is quite a nice touch, and uh, it's well represented in model form. So there you go, that is the Loco. It's very, very nicely presented. Like I say, whether you find them ugly or not, it doesn't matter. It's a, it's a well-made model. Uh, it's good quality, and with high levels of detail, relatively speaking. So that's that that's the detail let's get her down onto the track then and we'll see how nicely she performs all right so there's the ivac class 4 then down onto the track and yes i think she looks reasonably smart doesn't she okay so to test her pulling power i've set up this mixed train for a change so it's a mixture of coaches and goods and freight rolling stock uh, quite a bit of it you know so we're giving her a fair test of uh, pulling ability but now then let's talk a little bit about performance so as we already saw from the exploded diagram the loco does not appear to have any proper bearings in the chassis however they are uh, round and not square so at least back we have made some attempt to make the model last a while I don't know, I can't really speak for modern versions, for the latest version, but this version sadly doesn't have any tender pickups, and in fact there is no electrical connection between the loco and tender at all, uh, because on this version the DCC socket is in the locomotive. Once again, I would, have, I would be obliged if you've got one of the latest Backman versions in the modern packaging, have it, has it been upgraded to have tender pickups? Is the decoder socket now in the tender? Uh, I think if so, that would be a big um, improvement, really. Anyway, let's test the slow speed performance and see how she does on my HM2000. So this is on DC, although she does have the, the decoder socket, as I say. Okay, backwards first, obviously. And as you can tell, absolutely brilliant. If you can get it in that sweet spot, Look at that, fantastic slow speed. To be honest with you, I don't really think it gets a lot better than that, 
to be perfectly honest. Uh, yeah, it is very impressive. Uh, we'll see how she gets on with the express points, shall we? Uh, because obviously no tender pickups means that that might cause us some problems. So let me bring you with me. Oops. Uh, I might need to go a little bit faster because this is going to get long and boring if not. Uh, but just to keep you up to date, the first wheel is now going over the frog of the express point. The first driving wheel, I should say. There we are. First driving wheel's cl cleared it. Middle driving wheel's on it now. And has cleared it. And the back dri driving wheel's go going over it right now. And yes, it has managed to get over the express points without cutting out. And if you keep the wheels clean and keep the pickups clean, I don't see any reason why it should let you down. Although, obviously, if you do let things get a bit dirty, because it doesn't have tender pickups, you might start to see it struggling sooner than you might expect. Uh, but apart from that, yeah, very, very good. And look at those. Look at the valve gear and all those rods and things moving in synchronization. It's brilliant. Yeah, I like it. I like it overall. Okay, let's couple to the coaches and see how she pulls. Here we are. Let's see if I can get a nice steady coupling. There we go. Hopefully she's in shot there, is she? Yeah, seems to be. Okay, well, it's not a massive train, but then again, she's only classified as a four. So, yeah, we don't want to be stressing her out too bad. But let's see if she can manage this. Let's do a nice brisk start. Yep. She did that without any wheel slip, and I'll let the train go by so that you can see most of it. Nice mixed train, just for a bit of a change. And on the middle line, I'll show you what's running there. We have kind of a baby version of the stand of the IVAC Class 4, actually. Uh, this is the IVAC Class 2, or it might be the standard, but there isn't any difference between the two as far as I'm aware. Uh, it's just the name. Uh, this one's in the BR Green, as you can see, very, very lovely. And uh, yes, it looks very similar, except, of course, a lot smaller. So that's why I call it a, a baby version of the IVAC Class 4. And she's just got some passenger coaches, four of those. Not too many, since she's only a Class 2. And then on the inside line, so we've already had an IVAC Class 4, we've had an IVAC Class 2. So let's have another Class 4, and it's going to be, when it comes in, here it is, the Standard Class 4. It's the one I've kept wanting to talk about today, but accidentally, so I thought, why not bring her in? Uh, also in BR Green, just like the Standard uh, Class 2, slash IVAC Class 2 was, um, but yes, uh, this is a 4.6.0 instead of a 2.6.0. And once again, she has got, well, if I can get her to work, she has got some coaches and some goods. Well, I say goods, just a few tankers at the back. So get another mixed train. Enjoy the running session, folks. Do some train spotting and see if you can spot the old engine out. So, on the whole, she can handle a train pretty well. As you're going to see in a second, when she gets to the top of Gordon's Hill, there is a little bit of slowdown, a little bit of a sort of wheel slip combined with a motor slowdown. Uh, so it's not astonishingly powerful, but as you can see, this is a reasonably long train, so the pulling power is adequate, if not slightly above average, I would say. So here we go now then, just to demonstrate that, you'll see that she does slow down. See that? Just a little bit of a struggle, momentarily, and then she gets a bit better after the curve. And I do actually think I prefer the Class 2 here. Um, yeah, I prefer the smaller design, and I also really like the BL Green. I don't think you can beat that, can you? Of course, the Standard 4 is very business-like, um, but I think some people like that about her. And you can see why, it makes them look very handsome and serious-looking. Uh, yep, there's the IVAT, and there's the Class 2. Yeah, quite a nice little selection today of engines running, enjoying it. Interesting to see the train from above, get a bit of a vantage point on the rolling stock and you definitely saw that slow down there. It's only brief though. So yes, you'll have to let me know which of the IVAT designs you like the best. Do you like this one, the IVAT Class 4, or if we wait a second, hold on, the IVAT Class 2, or whichever this one is. Uh, yeah, for me it has to be the Class 2, although of course there are IVAT tank engines as well, so perhaps you prefer those, who knows.
So here are some of my ratings then for the Backman IVAP Class 4, not standard, keep wanting to say standard. So the detail, yes, the detail was actually very, very impressive. In fact, if not for the fact that it didn't have a painted cab, I would be giving this a 5 out of 5 because the detail was that good. However, no painted cab means I can't give it full marks, can I? Not reasonably. The power though, 4 out of 5, I think 3 out of 5 would be average, and this is definitely above average with that motley collection of rolling stock. It is hauling them very, very effectively, so 4 out of 5 there. The slow speed though, as you could see, was very, very impressive. That has to be, uh, you know, up there with some of the greats. So that has to be a 5 out of 5. The quality, I think I'm being maybe possibly a little bit generous here, but I'm giving it 4 out of 5. It's not full marks because it doesn't have the proper bearings and it doesn't have tender pickups or you know that sort of thing however the actual build of it is very very good there's a lot of die cast on there and it is generally pretty sturdy so that's four out of five value then the rrp of 135 pounds just strikes me as being average it's not a great price although it isn't terrible there are worse prices out there uh, but also you know if you want to say go to hattons or something like that and get this for 115 pounds or thereabouts i think that's quite a bit better still not absolutely brilliant but not bad at all so overall then that is 7.84 out of 10 a pretty decent score actually let's put her into the rankings uh, yep there she is 30th just above the standard class 4 quite strange since I'm running that as well and below the Hornby Sentinel yes not too bad So I've quite enjoyed that, the IVAT uh, Class 4 is not a class that I've ever reviewed before and uh, I've never reviewed this particular Backman Class 2 either so I will have to do that at some point as well. Um, but uh, once again, yeah, she has run a couple of times on the channel before uh, just because she is really quite attractive obviously. Alright then everybody, well I do hope you enjoyed that review, uh, it's certainly a new experience for me, as I say, never reviewed an IVAC class 4 before, so I hope you enjoyed that as well, if you did, please feel free to leave the video a like or even a comment, because I do love to hear from you, but for now I think that's basically all I've got to say, so everybody have a good day, and I will see you all very very soon. Alright, cheers everybody.